Welcome to Frank Talk About Sensors. I'm Randy Frank, and today the topic is a differential inductive switch for sensing. My guests are Tarek Chang, who's product manager at Texas Instruments, and Luke LaPointe, who's an applications engineer at Texas Instruments. Tarek and Luke, welcome to Frank Talk About Sensors. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for having us here. Thanks, Frank. Great. Well, Tarek, I guess, uh, why did TI feel a new sensing technique was required? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so, in the past, a lot of switching applications have been plagued with a lot of issues such as uh, calibration or reliability. And when we're looking at this, this becomes an issue when you're trying to design uh, products into uh, robust applications where there's dirty environments. And we decided to release this LDC0851 chip that uses inductive sensing such that you, would, you can alleviate these issues. The LDC-051, which is inductive sensing, is only sensitive to conductive objects, so it makes the system a lot more reliable. Um, it's not going to be affected by any dirt or dust. Uh, even DC magnetic fields doesn't uh, affect this. In addition, because we're using a two-coil approach, differential measurement, uh, we actually can uh, compensate for any temperature variation. Uh, in addition, with this, we don't need any magnets, so we remove the magnets from the system, uh, avoiding complications of installing this magnet, and instead we use a uh, piece of conductive target. So it makes the system a lot more easy, a lot more reliable while also reducing a lot of the complications uh, of installing magnets. So overall, a uh, very easy solution uh, to, to do and very uh, robust. Great. Now, Luke, Luke also, would, also wants to talk about how, how do we implement this? How do we address this? Uh, thanks. Yeah, as Tarek mentioned, we use an inductive sensing approach where uh, we use an LC oscillator where we are uh, driving an AC current into a PCB coil, and this generates an AC magnetic field that is sensitive to uh, proximity to conductive objects. And as those objects approach the sensor, it reduces the equivalent inductance as seen by the device. So as Tari mentioned, with two coil approach, you can make a simple high and low comparison between the coils and provide a simple output on the, the push-pull output pin. And the nice part about this device is there's no registers, there's no startup time, there's no programming required, and even the output is just a simple high and low. So you can put this into systems that require close proximity to metal uh, and a lot of other things where maybe a door opens and closes or uh, a lot of different applications where the metal is moving in the system, you can use the LDC with two sensor coils to sense that movement. Great. Now, if you explain the features and benefits uh, entirely uh, uh, of the LDC-08-51? Yeah, so the features, so let me, let me go back to the features and benefits. Um, when we're looking at features, we have, like I said, the two-coil approach where we're comparing the inductances of two coils. And because we're doing that, uh, we make the the temperature, the device a lot more stable in temperature variation uh, environment. So for example, when the temperature increases, both of the coils will drift at the same rate. And since we're measuring the differential approach, we can cancel out that drift. Um, in addition, because uh, we had a, a portfolio of inductive sensing solutions that required an I2C or SPI output, so a microcontroller needs to read this. With this new device, we're actually eliminating this uh, operation with a microcontroller, um, and instead we're, like Luke said, outputting a high-low signal. So it makes it a lot more uh, simple in implementation. Uh, because we have this high degree of accuracy, one, less than 1% switching accuracy, we can remove uh, any type of uh, production calibration uh, in, in uh, manufacturing. And uh, magnetless operation, uh, basically we're, we're just saying that uh, <clears throat> we're detecting conductive targets instead of a magnet. And so now you, you can make the system a lot more, uh, solution costs a lot more uh, 
cheap, and then also, uh, in addition, you're making it a lot more simple. And then finally, conduct a contact list uh, and only sensitive to conduct the material. We're making sure that this is very reliable in dirty environments, um, and you won't <clears throat> you won't have any other effects or false triggers uh, when you have dirt or dust in the in the system. Great. Can you give a little more detail as far as the basic uh, operation of the system, or uh, have you said basically uh, enough at this point? Um, we've, we've kind of highlighted some of the basics of the inductive sensing. Uh, we're showing here on the slide that if you fix the conductive target above the reference coil, uh, it essentially sets the reference inductance at a fixed value so that if you have an additional metal target that's moving, uh, the sense coil, its inductance will change over distance, and that's what we're showing here. The green line represents uh, the sense inductance, and as the conductive target moves left and right, you can see that at close proximity, the inductance drops low, and actually once it drops below the reference inductance, the output switches from high to low. And that uh, is the, essentially the basic operation of this device. And we've also here shown uh, an adjustment pin, and once you have the, the threshold defined in your system, we have a 4 to ADC or 16 levels of adjustment, fine-tuned adjustment, so that if you have a proximity application where you only want it to switch at a very, very close proximity, you can use that adjustment pin to, uh, to change the, the threshold. And basic operation, you can ground it, so there's uh, you know, a very simple way to use this device. Great. Do uh, you have any uh, ex application examples that you've looked into or consider to be uh, ideal ones for it? Yeah. Um, so there's actually two different ways that we've decided to implement these types of switches. Um, the, the great thing about the LDC051 and the inductive sensing solution is we have a lot of flexibility in your sensor design. Uh, we use a PCB coil um, as our sensor, you can also use a wire wound coil, but then the PCB coil, one approach is to have a stack uh, approach and you have both of the coils drawn on a single PCB, um, but the first two layers have the sensing coil and the second two layers have the reference coil. And this is great for any type of proximity measurements, open door, closed switches, as well as buttons. And Luke will be talking about that a little bit later. Um, in addition, we look at another type of approach, side-by-side um, -side coil approach, where we have a single PCB, but instead uh, we have the coils drawn out uh, adjacent from each other. And when we put this in proximity of a spinning motor, a gear, or even a flow meter, we can measure the pulse output um, and the speed of the motor is given through a high-low signal on the LDC-0851. So different applications for this, we were looking at uh, flow meters for uh, light goods, coffee machines. Uh, we even have uh, beer tooth counting in a lot of industrial applications and automotive applications as well. Katie, okay, can you go into more detail on uh, an application or two? Uh, sure. So as Tari mentioned, uh, this can be used for rotational encoding uh, as one example when you use uh, the coil in a system where you're trying to detect a rotating target. Uh, if the target is made out of metal, you can uh, place our two coils side by side so that as the, the target rotates, the metal swings by both coils and you kind of get this oscillating pattern of inductance and the output simply goes high and low correspondingly. And if the targets are evenly placed, you can just measure the output uh, so that you have a high and low uh, uh, output. And if you're tracking those, uh, over the course of an average, uh, you can you can very accurately determine the speed of that system. So if you can determine the speed of the system, uh, for a flow meter, for example, you can correlate the rotating speed to the flow of the liquid. Uh, so that's one good application for this, or uh, purely just for motor speed measurement. If you had uh, your, your metal target on the motor that's spinning, you can uh, sense that as it rotates as well. And, and actually for the rotational encoding, we've been looking at the, the flow meters and traditionally in the market, you've seen flow meters that are using uh, magnets and hall, hall switches to measure this flow rate. However, when you have to install the magnet, uh, because you don't want to place the magnet uh, close to the water where it can seep into the water and provide uh, hazardous uh, safety, uh, different types of hazards, uh, we actually
actually can remove the magnet, put a safe conductive material, and measure that instead. So it makes uh, a lot more safe for the users as well as easier for the designers to place this. Great. Not to mention it removes the weight. Typically in these kind of applications, the sensing the low flow rate is very critical. And so if you use a magnet, sometimes those magnets are heavy because they're in a small form factor. They have to be able to sense very far. So that weight actually slows down the impeller. So you know, if there's bubbles going through the liquid or if the liquid's just not able to push the impeller very strongly, you won't detect those low flow rates. And as Tari mentioned, you can use very light material, uh, just a simple um, you know, metallic coating on the impeller will suffice and allow you to get to those really low flow rates. Excellent. Now, any other applications uh, that you want to discuss? Yep, so uh, we've actually we've done some TI designs to mimic uh, some, some potential applications that you might see in the real world. Uh, for example, we have a 32 position knob encoder, which you might see in a lot of uh, infotainment on cars, uh, volume knobs in your home appliances, a lot of these different things. And this uses the concept of rotational encoding that we were just discussing. Uh, we use two LBC0851s, and we connect them uh, in uh, an orientation so that as the target rotates, you have an incrementing gray code output. So you can determine both the increasing level and the decreasing level. And uh, this, this uh, approach actually scales to a wide variety of uh, accuracies. So if you have a target, as we're showing here in the TI design, uh, you can set it up for 32 positions. Uh, or if you wanted to detect even more accurate, you could use a smaller sliver of metal. Uh, and that's, that's what we're showing here is a, a rotation, a circular target where the red represents copper and then the black represents uh, no copper. So with that arrangement, you can actually print it on a PCB, you can attach it to your knob. And so for the same LDC approach, uh, you can use different targets and different knobs and get different accurate outputs. So for, this one has a lot of information that's already published on the web where we kind of go into the design of how to do it um, and how you might adapt this design for either less or more accuracy. Um, we've also done a fan speed event counting uh, application, and this is, again, targeting the, the rotating targets. So we've attached metal targets to the fan and placed our coils underneath, underneath the fan and sent them as they rotate. Um, and one thing I wanted to highlight on, on the fan speed event counting is, is traditionally when we're looking at these type of applications, uh, especially in server farms, we're measuring uh, the, the current application measures the current that's driving uh, the motor in the fan. However, we're not actually measuring the fan blade, so even if the motor is running, the fan blade may not be moving and actually can cause failures. Um, and we've seen this happen in the past where server farms have gone down um, and no longer are running. That can uh, cost customers a lot of money. Um, with our solution, we're actually measuring the fans, fan blades, so it becomes a lot more reliable. We know if the fan is actually moving or not, and that's what's important. Absolutely important. <laughs> it's, uh, I understand there's a, a, a development tool that you have uh, put together for the system as well? Yep. We've uh, actually prototyped uh, an evaluation module to make the evaluation of the LDC 0851 uh, simple. Uh, uh, it's available on the web. Uh, we're actually showing here that it consists of three different sections. Uh, there's a power section, which you can either insert a uh, USB cable for 5-volt to 3-volt conversion, or you can just simply uh, insert a battery on the back. And that's what we're showing here. You can, uh, you can take this with you. Uh, it makes it very simple and portable. There's no programming required. Uh, so you can just plug in your battery and then go off and start testing stuff. The middle portion is where the LDC uh, sits, and we've included a lot of additional features. Uh, as we mentioned, there was a threshold adjustment. Uh, we've included a potentiometer, just a simple uh, rotational pop that you can adjust with your thumb. If you want to adjust the threshold, if you want it to go further or closer, you can use that, that potentiometer. Um, and then the enable reset uh, is just a simple slider switch uh, we're showing there. And then the output is just a simple LED, high or low. It indicates, without using an oscilloscope, what state the LEC is in. And then uh, highlighted in the box area is just the LDC uh, 0851 device. You can see that there's uh, just a simple capacitor there to set the frequency, and then there's two bypass capacitors there to stabilize the supply, which uh, you, can, you can get away with one capacitor, um, and that's a simple, uh, easy application. And then 
the, the sensor itself is a 20 millimeter coil diameter with stacked coils. So as Tari mentioned, you can either lay the coils out adjacent or you can place them beneath each other. And this one is demonstrating for close proximity applications. You can detect when a target is approaching or going away um, with about 40% of the coil diameter. And the great thing about these, these evaluation boards is that we have perforation so that you can actually detach these different sections uh, and hook it up to different other different types of coils, which we also have available online. And uh, it just makes it a lot more easy for the customer or designers to prototype into their system if they want to use different types of coil layouts or different power, power supplies. Well, that's a very interesting, a very interesting product and a very interesting uh, development tools there. Where can listeners go to get more information? Yeah, so if uh, listeners are more interested, we have a landing page uh, on www.ti.com slash LDC. Uh, we also have this evaluation tool on our e-store, which is uh, on ti.com slash tool slash LDC 0851 EVM. Uh, in addition, the, the different types of TI designs that we've listed, uh, you can find those uh, on our TI design list. The specific one for the 32 position knob demo is TIDA00828, and the fan speed is going to be TIDA00851 slash or dash LDC0851. Well, that's very good information. Tara Galuka, thanks for joining us today. And that's going to do it for this Frank Talk About Sensors. See you next time.